our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, we love him very much. And we have a big, uh, great red line in uh, talking about him. And she crossed the red line? Yes. Mrs Gibbons is moved to a jail in a secret location for her own safety. This evening, the Muslim peer, Lord Ahmed, is on his way to Sudan to appeal for Mrs Gibbons to be released. Also tonight, recriminations break out between the Labour official and the millionaire businessman at the centre of the donations row. Hundreds of firefighters pay tribute to one of their four colleagues killed in the warehouse blaze in Warwickshire. And the daredevil motorcycle stuntman Evil Knievel, who wowed crowds in the 70s, has died. On BBC London News, the families of 77 victims are sent graphic details of their injuries, even though they didn't ask for them, and the dementia patient who accidentally hanged himself in a care home. Good evening. Up to a thousand protesters have been demonstrating in the capital of Sudan, demanding that the jailed British teacher, Gillian Gibbons, be executed. They burned pictures of her and shouted that her 15-day sentence was too lenient. Mrs Gibbons, who was in prison for letting one of her school children name a teddy bear Mohammed, has been moved to a jail at a secret location for her own safety. Tonight, the Muslim peer, Lord Ahmed, is on his way to Sudan to try to press for her early release. Adam Minot reports from Khartoum. Fury in Khartoum as many hundreds of people poured out of Friday prayers and onto the streets of the capital. There were elements of theatre about the protests, but genuine upset too. And from a hot-headed minority of the crowd, calls for Gillian Gibbons to be killed. This old British lady, if I find her, I will kill her and behead her myself. Sticks, swords and banners were waved in an outpouring of anger at her perceived insult to Islam. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, we love him very much. And we have a big, uh, great red line in uh, talking about him. And she crossed the red line? Yes, yes. Gillian Gibbons was initially to be held in a prison in Omdurman, the old part of the city. But tonight she was moved to an undisclosed secure location apparently for her own safety. She is reported to have told her son from jail that she doesn't want any resentment towards Muslims. The women's prison, where she was due to be incarcerated for the next 10 days, has an appalling reputation. All conditions are horrible, in terms of environment, in terms of food, uh, sanitation, you know, water, everything is really bad. Tonight, the Labour peer Lord Ahmed is flying with a private delegation to Sudan to add to ongoing efforts to get Gillian Gibbons released immediately. He was invited by the Sudanese government, suggesting there is room for agreement. Considerable diplomatic pressure is still being applied by Britain on the Sudanese government here in Khartoum. And I understand that the British authorities feel that there is still room for a compromise where Gillian Gibbons can be released ahead of serving her full 15-day sentence. Only a small minority joined in protest today. Many in Sudan know little of the case, and others feel she should not have been prosecuted and that court action against her has damaged Islam. The Sudanese criminal justice system is harsh and unyielding. Others have been beaten for illegally brewing alcohol, for adultery, and even for protesting about plans to relocate a university in the capital. The street protest lasted two hours and ended as quickly as it had started. The conviction of Gillian Gibbons has damaged relations between Britain and Sudan. Her quick release could limit that damage, but could also offend many Sudanese who feel their religion has been slighted. Adam Minot, BBC News, Khartoum. Well, our security correspondent Frank Gardner is here with me. Frank, Lord Ahmed is on his way to Sudan tonight. What are the hopes, realistically, of getting Mrs Gibbons released early, as he's going to try and do? Pretty high. I spoke to Lord Ahmed uh, at the airport just a few hours ago as he prepared to leave, and the indications that he's been given from the top in Sudan are very encouraging, that they want to cooperate in the early release or in the release of Ms Gibbons, but because this is very embarrassing to, for the Sudanese government. Um, he's going, together with him is a shadow minister, the, uh, uh, the Conservative by, uh, Baroness uh, Varsi, 
And because they are two Muslims, they are going to talk Muslim to Muslim with the Sudanese government. Lord Ahmed has spent much of this week already negotiating quite separately from the Foreign Office with the Sudanese authorities. He knows them well. He's met General uh, Omar Bashir, the Sudanese president, before. So he's relatively optimistic that when he returns to Britain by around Monday, he might possibly have misgivings with him. And what do you manage to find out about, about his relations with the Sudanese government and the, the discussions yes. he's been having so far then? Well, I mean... I think the question one should ask, why, why should she be released early? Why, you know, it's, why would the Sudanese government do this? Um, this may sound like a conspiracy theory, but there are some analysts who think that this will actually suit the Sudanese government to show mercy in just the same way that Iran's President Ahmadinejad did over the sailors captured earlier this year, that because he's releasing them to a non-government player, Lord Ahmed, um, to a Muslim, in a way that's thumbing his nose, or thumbing Sudan's nose, at the British government, the former colonial power that ruled Sudan up until 1956. This could be a face-saving way out to get her out of the country early. The Sudanese government, I don't think, wants to hang on to her any longer, any more than she wants to be there. Okay, Frank, thank you very much.